Try to walk out of this valley, but I'm so tired, I'm lonely, and Lord, I'm weak, and I keep on falling. It seems I've lost my will and my strength, but you said you'd never leave me, so tonight. Speak peace to my weary soul and mind. Lord, please take my body. Cause you know what you do. On the back. Jesus, 
just hold my hand. Hold my hand. Well, I need, yes, I need every hand. every yard. And through this land, this, this pilgrim land, protected by the saving power. My feet, my feet, my feet, my feet. Oh, Jesus, hold my hand. When I wander through the valley, dim toward the setting of the sun, lead me safely to a land of rest by a crown of life. Have ask our ushers to come forward this time to receive this evening's offering. Brother Waylon, give me, will you come ask the blessing over the offering, please? Let us pray. Most kind, gracious, heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, for another opportunity, Lord, to, to enter into thy house to worship one such a great as thou art. Lord, we just pray, God, Lord, that everybody comes seeking tonight, Lord. Lord, that they might come looking to be strengthened tonight in your precious blood. Lord, we just look to worship you tonight, Lord, and we just pray, God, Lord, that you look down upon us, Lord, and, and have mercy upon us, Lord God. Lord, we just pray now that you take this offering, Lord, and use it for the upbuilding of thy kingdom, Lord. And Lord, we pray most of all that if there be one here lost tonight, Lord, that today be the day of salvation for them. And these things we give you praise, honor, and glory for. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I have a home prepared where the saints abide just over in the glory land. And I long to be
joyful thought that my Lord I'll see just over in the glory land and with kindred saved there forever be just over in the glory land just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angels and just over in the glory Brother Matthew Hennessy comes and sings for you tonight.
day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day!
Good to let the old devil know that we ain't quit yet. Hallelujah, aren't you glad that we're in a good fight? Paul said, fight the good fight, lay hold on eternal life. Oh, thanks be unto God this evening. What a wonderful occasion it is to gather into the house of the Lord, to be able to bless His name. Have you already had a good time? Boy, me too. Bless the Lord. I tell you, we've been about that, that shy from having real church all day, hadn't we? Boy, I'm telling you, what a wonderful, wonderful day the Lord hath made. If you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to turn with me to the gospel according to Luke chapter 10 and then John chapter 12. Luke chapter 10, John chapter 12. This is a, a, a different kind of, of message that I'm going to preach, especially when we have two that we're licensing to preach uh, tonight and I would call them out and make them sit up here in this. Matter of fact, let's do that. Come on up here and sit right here in these two seats tonight. Wouldn't you? We're not ordaining them tonight. But they've, matter of fact, Chad's already been ordained, but we are going to license them uh, this evening. And uh, it's important, too. I don't know how important, but it's important. And it's important. I know it's got to be important to them. And... Um, I'm telling you what, this right here is a sheet of paper. That sheet of paper never did mean much to me. I tell you, that one that called me to do it means everything. Paper will burn. You can take this home with you, and I, I've got mine in there on that wall, and, and if a fire was to start in this place, it'd be gone. But I sure am glad. Thank God that this... This call that I have burns inside of me every day. And I'm so thankful that God called me to preach. And, and matter of fact, if you fellows were to have to take the presidential seat of the United States of America, you'd have to, you'd have to step down. It'd be a step down rather than where you are as a man of God. I believe that with all of my heart. Have to take a demotion to fill that seat. But what would be good if God put a God-called man... In the Oval Office today, and started every day opening up the precious Word of God, and with prayer, and seeking guidance for the United States of America. I know y'all have heard me preach it and say it, but I still believe that God's people have breath. As long as we've got that breath, we ought to praise Him, and I believe that God can still send revival to America. I believe that. I believe he's sending one to our area, and I'm so glad to be a part of it. Thank the Lord. Luke chapter 10, if you can, would you stand in reverence to the reading of the Word of God? Luke chapter 10, and the Bible says in verse 38, Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Well, that'd be a good sermon right there, wouldn't it? Hearing his word. Be not only a hearer of the word, but a doer of it. But Martha was, was cumbered. Matter of fact, that word cumbered right there means distracted. She was cumbered about with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve? Bid her therefore that she help me. Here she is telling the Lord what he ought to do. Have you ever been guilty of that? That's what she's doing. Am I telling you the truth? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Did you hear how I said that second one? I covered the way Martha and Martha. That's the way mountain folks say Martha. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Now turn with me to John chapter 12. 
John chapter 12. Verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead. Well, I like that, don't you? Which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper. And Martha served. She's still serving, isn't she? But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Nobody has to tell me when he's in the house. You can hear him. You can feel him. Sometimes you can smell him. Amen. Praise God. In, in the house. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had a bag and bare what was put therein. Then Jesus said, let her alone. Don't you like it when Jesus takes up for you? <laughs> let him alone. Let her alone against the day of my burying. Hath she kept this? For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. And if I can tonight, I, I want to talk to you about how to serve, how to serve. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Kind Jesus, we love you, and God, we trust in your anointing. God, I pray, Father, that you anoint me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. God, I pray, Jesus, that you touch Brother Chad, Brother Whalen. I pray you touch their families. God, I pray for friends that have gathered here this evening. God, I pray that you pour out a blessing, Lord. God, that we are not expecting tonight. God, we come expecting things from you, but God, may the blessing that fall here be greater than we ever thought. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for passing by this way this evening. And above all, if someone here is lost, may they be saved tonight. God, help that one that's struggling. And God, help that one that's serving, Lord, and teach them how to serve. And God, we'll praise you for this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the sweet, sweet Holy Ghost. And all God's people said... Amen. You can be seated if you can tonight. Martha was being distracted. Matter of fact, when I think about being distracted, I can't help but think about times in my life that I become distracted. And it's easy to get our eyes on what other people are not doing and not focusing on what people are doing for the cause of Jesus Christ. And gentlemen, I'll go ahead and tell you that, that in doing the work of the Lord, you've probably already figured this out. You'll be doing a lot of it. You'll be doing a lot of it yourself, and you'll wonder why others are not trying to help do the work of the gospel that he's called us to do. So many are distracted. And so we see in the Word of God that Martha said, Lord, tell her what she needs to do. In other words, he don't know what he, in other words, he, she is telling him, Lord, somebody needs to help me do what I'm doing. And there's a reason for this. There's a reason why that she feels this way. But matter of fact, you're going to find the majority of the gospels that were written, the majority of the gospels and the things that were done, were written about the last week of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not sure you knew that. And you know what you'll find in the last week of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ on this side? He was watching, he was working, and he was weeping. Three things that he's doing. Three things that he told us to do. To watch and pray. 
If we sow in tears, we'll reap in what? In joy. We ought to be watching. We ought to be looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He could come any day. And I believe we ought to be like the Lord, weeping, watching, and working till he comes. Now, the world couldn't hold the books. If everything was written that the Lord has done, the world could not hold the books. Matter of fact, you know what Job said about this world? He said he hung it on nothing. God hung this world on nothing. You can take your hat. You got to hang your hat on something. But God hangs things on nothing. And there's a lot of times in the ministry when we're serving the Lord. We don't know where we're going to hang that thing up at. But I'm telling you, if we'll trust in God, we'll be able to hang it where it needs to go and God will keep it there. There are three different times that Jesus was anointed. The first one is Luke chapter 7. took place at Capernaum at the house of Simon the Pharisee. The second place was in John chapter 12 at Bethany in the house of Lazarus, his friend. I just read part of it. The third, we find the third time was at the house of Simon the leper in Mark chapter 14. And you know, we're, we'll get guilty of arguing over when and where certain things may have taken place, but miss the part that's best. They were in the house of a leper, and Jesus was there, and other people were there. The disciples were there, but there was something about this leper that was different. He didn't have leprosy anymore. Don't miss the miracle inside the message. If we, don't, if we don't get the miracle inside of the message, then we might miss it all. I don't want to miss that because it's a type of salvation. Leprosy is always throughout Scripture a type of sin. And so when, when those lepers were cleansed by the Lord, their lives were saved. But not only that, they put their faith in Jesus Christ. And so we've all been eat up with the leprosy of sin in times past. But aren't you glad that God brings healing to our souls? That God still has a remedy today. So we see that he's changed. He has the same name here, but he's not the same person anymore. Do you remember when you were in sin? Do you remember before you started preaching the gospel? But when you was out there in that sinful state that you were in. And you know, when we're out there in that sinful state, we need to go back down memory lane once in a while and just remember that a lot of times when we give our lives to Christ, our friends change. One, right, one fellow put it like this. You've probably heard it. If you sleep with the dogs, you're going to get the fleas. Daddy used to say that. If you sleep with the dogs, you're going to get the fleas. I said one time when I was preaching on that, I said he didn't tell me about the ticks. <laughs> he didn't tell me about the mange. Friend, I'm going to tell you something. You, you run with the world. You're going to look like the world. You're going to smell like the world. You're going to act like the world. And when you come to Jesus, hallelujah, when you come to Jesus, your life is changed. And when you are changed, you are different in every part of your life because now Jesus lives inside of you. His spirit dwells inside of you. We find that Mary took a pound, a pound of ointment, spikenard, costly perfume. No doubt that she'd been saving this for a special day, for a special purpose, for a special person. And she break this and she began to pour it upon the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now Luke chapter 10 we find that on this day, Martha is serving. But while she is serving, she's griping and grumbling and complaining. Now, I'm not going to have you raise your hand if you've ever done that because I know if you raised your hand and said no, you'd be a liar and the truth wouldn't be in you. 
But there's days as a Christian that you grumble and that you gripe and that you complain about having to listen to somebody, go see somebody, or even you complain about having to go to the house of God again. Or they've got that event going on down there and you really just don't want to go. But you go anyway. You'd have been better off to stay at the house. But you went griping and grumbling, got out of the car with a smile on your face, acted happy, hypocrite, hypocrisy in its rarest form. I didn't want to go to choir practice. You know what I'm saying. And so we find that Martha is serving, but she's complaining. And notice who she's complaining to. I mean, boy, that woman needed tame, didn't she? She just ain't complaining to a man. She's complaining to the God man. But before we get too haughty, We've been guilty of it too. Matter of fact, I've been guilty of trying to devise a way that God ought to do something for me. God, if you'll do this, I'll do that. Finally, I got to the point it didn't matter. God, God, I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do, whether you bless me or not. I'm just going to go ahead and follow your word. We're better off that way. And so we find that she's serving but she's not serving in the right attitude. In John chapter 12, it's a different time. It's not the same time. It's not the same dinner. It's not the same meal. The same people are mentioned, but it's a different time. I mean, we gathered here this morning, but it's not the same service. It's different. And so at this time, Martha, what is she doing? She's serving supper again. She's serving, and Mary is at the Lord's feet again. Same places we find them, but this time, bless the Lord, she's not complaining. What happened between Luke chapter 10 and John chapter 12? They're still cooking, Martha's still cooking, and Mary's still at the feet of the Lord. The first time she's serving with a grudge. But the next time she's serving with gratitude. Hallelujah. Amen. Boy, I'm telling you, notice what happens. See, at the church, there are some that when we come in and we need to do something for the church or for a ministry, it might be food distribution. It might be something with with the technology. It might be something with the music or something with the class. And, And sometimes the devil will get a hold of us and we feel like that we're really doing the Lord a good service by doing that and being here and we're serving him out of his purpose. Now don't miss this. We're serving him out of his purpose. I've been guilty of serving him out of his purpose. The first time Martha was serving Jesus out of, she was serving the Lord because out of his will. (coughs) And she was serving him out of his purpose. But see, Mary was serving the Lord out of her need. Not the Lord's need, but out of her need. What in the world are you trying to say, preacher? I'm saying this. Some event took place in Martha's life that changed the outlook on how she was going to serve Jesus. How she was going to cook, how she was going to clean, how she was going to give of her finances, whatever it was, something changed in this woman. The Bible says in John chapter 11 that Mary and Martha sent for Jesus because Lazarus, their brother, was sick. We know the story well. We preach about it. We sing about it. We talk about it. And Jesus, he did not come whenever they called. And so we all begin to wonder, what was he trying to do? He was taking his time that God the Father might get glory that the Father might be glorified. 
And you know what? We have to go through some suffering a little bit in this life before we really get the glory. We have to suffer a little while at times and we don't enjoy it when we're stretching ourselves, trying to get something done for the Lord. But remember, if you're stretching, if you're stretching for the wrong reason, you're going to hurt a whole lot more. She's better in Luke 10. She's better in John 12. And this event that took place was none other than when she got to the point when she had to trust the Lord more than any other time, he raised her brother from the dead. And every one of us can go back to one event in our life. One event in our lives as a Christian where we could not get through that time by ourselves. There is no way you'll never walk by it in your mind. That one time when you needed God to show up and God showed up. And from that point on, things changed in your life. See, Jesus doesn't need us to serve him for his need. We need to serve him out of our need because we know we're going to need him. But we're serving out of our need. If that ever registers with you as a Christian, that you're serving out of your need, you won't be griping and complaining when the church or something needs done, but you will enjoy doing it because you'll never forget that one time you needed God and God showed up in your life. Oh, my. You know that time. I know that time when God showed up. We don't serve Jesus out of his need, but out of our need. That day in John 12, she had stood at the door of death. She, she knows who he is now, and she knows what he's got. He's got it all. He's got everything that we need. Hallelujah. When Martha started serving the Lord out of her needs, her attitude changed. And praise God, when he saved me, when he forgave me, I started serving him out of my need for him. And friend, it changes everything. Martha did okay till she saw her brother dead. And after that, she changed. Aren't you glad for that time God changed it in your life? The darkness, the gloom, the doom. And all of a sudden Jesus showed up when you needed him. And did that thing that you need. Gentlemen, you've been a preaching a while. And it is our honor tonight to license you to preach the gospel of the North Georgia Association of Free Will Baptists and the First Free Will Baptist Church. There's some things in serving. I hope that, that tonight that we'll glean from Martha and from Mary. Mary was willing to sit at his feet and serve him there. And listen, I want to tell you something. There's a time to cook and there's a time to clean and there's a time to where we just come at the feet of Jesus and learn of him. Matter of fact, there's one, there's going to be more battles won at the feet of Jesus in the closet of prayer than there will be on the field of battle. Preaching the gospel, you've been called to preach, and it's a serious responsibility of preaching the gospel, not just in a pulpit, but every day that we live, we are to preach the gospel. The preacher of the gospel does not necessarily deal, deal with material, but with things that are eternal. The second thing is that he is responsible for the general spread of the gospel. The third thing, he is responsible for the building up of the saints or Christians. It's, it's our duty to try to build people up. When we see them down, we need to try to lift them up in the name of the Lord. Matter of fact, when's the last time you as a believer just lifted somebody up? When's the last time that you've been a Mary, break something for somebody and bless them? 
instead of in there babbling and griping and complaining about everything. We see that you're responsible for the unsaved wherever we're at. Both you gentlemen teach classes in the church time to time, chat every week, and wailing on and off. You, and you got your ministry at, at the church here, at the, at the nursing home, every week preaching there. There's a responsibility. And that responsibility is to preach to them and give them an opportunity to come to know Jesus Christ as Lord of their life. We're watchmen on a wall. That's what we are. We're looking out. We're serving God. We get there sometimes ser- serving the Lord. And, and, and some people think that, that preachers shouldn't do some things and they should. Do. Listen, we're to do whatever needs to be done. There's times I'm carrying the trash out around here. And, and I heard Billy say this one time. And there was a lady come to me and say, well, you're the pastor. You shouldn't carry out the trash. Well, the trash is full. Carry it out. Doesn't bother me. You know why? Because I'm no better than anybody else when it comes to the kingdom. I'm not. But when I see a need, I'm going to do the job. And gentlemen, I'm proud of you. I love you. And we're going to license you tonight. And we're going to have you come down here. We're going to pray over you this evening in just a minute. But I want to ask you, Sunday night, Sunday night service, you you know, it, it is a little bit different service. How have you been serving the Lord? How have you been serving? Ladies and wives of these two men, you can either make their ministry or you can break it. You can bless it or disrupt it. The tension can't be on you. It can't necessarily be on them, but it's got to be on the Lord. But this man will have to come first in your life. Jesus first, them second. You'll have to take care of them. There'll be a time for you to be quiet. There'll be a time to shut your mouth. Amen. There'll be a time you don't say nothing. There'll be a time when you need to speak. But when you speak, you better be careful with the words that come from your tongue because every one of them are coming back on these two guys. Don't destroy these men's ministry. You be a part of it. You help it grow. Help it to mature. Get behind them. You pray for them. Because they're praying for you. They love you. They care about you. They'd do anything for you. They care about their family, their children. They care about their children. In church, we need to pray for them. We need to encourage them. We need to do all we can for them. As you bow your heads tonight all over the building as they get a song of invitation, I want to ask you, how have you been serving the Lord? How have you been serving the Lord, friend? How about it? You've been griping and complaining? Have you forgot about that one event in your life that whenever you walked by it, that it changed you? Have you been complaining some? It's up to you to make the decision tonight. We're going to give you an opportunity to come. If you need to pray, you you come now. Kind Jesus, God, we love you. Lord, we praise you. And God, for that one that's unsaved under the sound of my voice, give them an opportunity. Speak to their heart tonight. God, for that one that is, they've been serving you, Lord, but they haven't been serving you in the right attitude. God, may they serve in an attitude of gratitude. We, We have our youth retreat coming up next weekend. God, no doubt it's gonna, there's going to be a lot of labor. There's going to be a lot of sweat. There's going to be a lot of tears. God, help us to keep the attitude, knowing that we're serving out of our need because we're going to need you in our lives. God, you've been so good to us. You've met our needs. You've done so much for us. And God, I praise you for who you are and what you've done. God, help me as a pastor, Lord, as a preacher, Lord, to not grumble when, Lord, there's things that need to be done. Lord, we love you tonight. God, give us honesty as a a people, as a church. Give us honesty. During this altar call, may we be honest with you. May we move, Lord, 
if you speak to us in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost and all God's people said amen let's stand all over the building hey if you need to come pray you come pray tonight you just come on right now just as I am yes without shed for me was shed for me and that thou didst and that all out thou bidst me come to thee do you need to pray tonight of God I come one more verse one more verse. Just as I am. How you been serving the Lord? And waiting How you been serving? God bless her, Jesus. To read bless her, Lord. My soul How about some of you ladies pile up and of one pray with her? Yes. To thee. Whose blood. Whose blood each spot can cleanse each spot oh, man. oh lamb of god of god i come god bless him lord jesus bless him lord jesus I come. god bless him lord. i was shackled by a Come on, friend. You need to pray. You come tonight. Beneath the load of guilt and shame. But then the hand of Jesus touched me. And now I am no longer the same. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know He touched me, and He made me whole. And since I met this blessed Savior, Since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I will shout while he turns He touched me, oh, He touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul, something happened, and now I
has risen from the dead and he is Lord every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. That's a dad and a daughter right here who just rededicated their lives he to Jesus Christ. Is yeah, give him praise in the house of God tonight. He has risen. Yes, thank you, From Jesus. the dead. Sing it, church. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. And every knee is going to bow. Every tongue. And every tongue. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. That Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. I'm going to have all ordained preachers come. We pray for these two preachers. Not good to have Brother Davis from the Church of God in Blairsville. Come on, brother. Join us tonight. You lead us in prayer over these two men. Come on, Brother Whalen, Brother Chad. Get right here in the middle. Praise be unto the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, as we pray over them. How many of you by an upstretched hand say, I'm going to pray blessing over these men. I'm going to pray anointing over them. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Lead us, brother. Lord, we praise you now. God, we ask it, Lord, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. Be it done in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you proud of these two men tonight? God's men doing God's work. Keep playing, Brother Lucas. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
Hasn't God been good to this church? Yeah, praise Him. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What a sweet service tonight. Brother Chad, Brother Whalen, I got something I want to give you up here. Come on up, back up. Waylon Jesse Gibby is now licensed to preach the gospel done this May 17th, 2015 by the order of the North Georgia Association of Free Will Baptists while in regular session at First Free Will Baptist Church. Are you proud of Waylon? Yes, you better love me. Praise the Lord. Brother William Chad Sism done this day, 17th, day of May, 2015, by order of the North Georgia Association of Free Will Baptists, while in regular session at First Free Will Baptist Church, is now licensed at the Free Will Baptist Church to preach the gospel. God bless you. Love you. Love you. <laughs> you guys want to, you want to say anything? I just want to say tonight that, that like Brother Chris said, you know, this piece of paper, this piece of paper, it, it's important to me. I like it because, because that's, you know, the Lord called me to preach the gospel. That's what he called me to do. But this is just a piece of paper. But but I'm glad to know that I got these other pieces of paper right here. That 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 This right here led my name to be written on another piece of paper up there in heaven, hallelujah, the book of life. There my name's written. I just praise his holy name for his precious blood. I, I, thought, I thought about it there, and Brother Chris said in Luke chapter 10, you know, I preached out that same, same chapter this morning. The same chapter, about the same message, just a different verse. We need willing people today. You know, it said over there in the Bible, it said that that, that lawyer, he was willing to justify himself. And, and I found it funny because whenever I first understood, when I first read that, first scripture I thought he was boasting till I looked up that word justified and what they were saying right there in the Greek tongue and that word justified right there in the Greek tongue it says that he was willing put this in the place of that to be placed with the proper people justified in that in that word that, that Greek word meant to be placed in the proper place he was willing to be justified he was willing to justify himself and be placed with the proper people that's why he asked, who is my neighbor? Who is our neighbor? It's everybody who loves us. It's everybody in this world is our neighbor. We're supposed to go out and do good unto all. I love every one of you and thank you. I'm just a man that God called to do a little bit of his work. Maybe to just barely touch the surface of some places Brother Chris and Waylon can't touch. Just maybe he can use me. Friend, let me tell you, we are a blessed people to be here tonight. He passed through here just a while ago. Just that sweet, sweet, sweet spirit. He didn't have to do that, but he did because he loves us. What would we do without him? Been in a battle. But I've got the victory. I'm counting it done. I'm counting on him. I taught in Sunday school this morning about the eagles. When they're in the nest, the mama, she'll go to kicking them rascals out there when it comes time. She'll get it uncomfortable. Sometimes that's the way the Lord does us to get us a little closer to Him. I don't like them battles sometimes, Scotty. But you can bet one thing, when you get through that thing, you'll be stronger for the next. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. If you'll just keep me in your heart. 
He loves us, folks. He ain't going to throw us in the ditch nowhere. We just got to trust Him. That's all you got to do. He says in John chapter 14, I think, the verse around 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He'll set the alcoholic free. The dope head can be cleaned up. Heard a man last night say, I've never got, I don't have a past. I was raised in a Christian home. Well, I was raised in probably one of the finest, but I was as mean as the devil. I'd done things I shouldn't have. The guy said last night I was a good kid. He didn't get out and do the things that I did, but he's got just as good of a testimony as I do. You still got to come by the way of the cross. No other way but by the blood of the Lamb. That's the only way. We love you. I thank God he's placed me here for this time. I hope and pray I'm here till I get old. We never know what the Lord's got for us to do. But till he changes my route, I'll be right here. I don't plan on going anywhere. Pray for me and my family. Pray for me and Waylon tonight as we go. We've both got to go. We've got to travel about six hours to go to work in the morning. But how many knows that God will give you traveling mercies? I've seen it too many times. He's, I've dodged a bullet because of God's grace. Amen. Nothing that Chad done. But it's the grace of God that will see you through. Let's lean on him tonight. There's a song that they used to sing a lot in the Pentecostal church. I lean on you, Lord. Let's lean and depend on him. Amen. How about that? Let's try him. Let's try Jesus. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll be your friend when your wife's mad at you. He'll be your friend when you think there ain't nobody around. When it comes time to come out of that nest and you think you're on the ground, that mama will just come down. Jesus will just send his hand down. And he'll, by the time you think you're going to face plant, Brother Mike, he'll pick you up. And he'll raise you up above. He'll say, greater is he that is in me, that is in the world. <laughs> Don't you love him tonight? Hallelujah. God bless every one of you. Amen. Gentlemen, why don't y'all go to the back in the foyer and have people, the rest of the church come by and shake your hand tonight on the way out. And uh, Brother Wade, and that was some of your kinfolk that rededicated tonight, wasn't it? Wonderful. Wonderful. His brother. Is that right? Brother-in-law. That's right. Brother-in-law and niece. It's a wonderful time. Now remember, this week going to need a lot of prayer. I'm going to need a lot of prayer. I'm really going to need a lot of prayer tomorrow. I've got to, uh, I've got to play golf with Ken Hall. Oh, Lord, I'm telling you. Lord better show up. Brother Scott and... Uh, my father-in-law, we, we've got to play golf in a, in a tournament, an FCA tournament, raising money. Well, I'm telling you what, they'll be paying to get us off that course when they see us. I think I've played golf one time in two years. And uh, I just have a set of clubs because they're pretty. But Y'all pray real hard about that. FCA, I'll be, in, I'll be in one, two, three, four, five schools this week. Five schools this week. I'll be at an FCA. Really need prayer. That God will touch them. And, and in case you, you didn't understand, I'm, I'm the FCA area rep for Western North Carolina. I'm, I'm able to go in the schools. And this, this past week and a half, it's a little different. I get to go in and tell them about what FCA is. Entire schools, assemblies have been there. So I'm getting to tell them all about what FCA is. And anybody, any student, you didn't have to be a part of athletics to be a part of Fellowship Christian Athletes. That's something that, that has hindered growth. But that's, um, that's something that we're talking about. They go to camps. As a matter of fact, for, for our kids and our church, and should have mentioned this this morning, we have camps, leadership camps for middle school kids and high school kids. If they want to go, FCA and, and our director in Western North Carolina, it, we feel so strongly about these kids going to camp, and it doesn't matter if they're not even if they're not even in North Carolina. If your kids want to go, you see me, 
We'll make sure they go to camp. I'm talking three or four hundred dollar camps. They won't pay one penny to go. We'll send them because we feel like our investment of helping them become a better leader for Jesus Christ, there's no price on that. So, so you pray, you pray for us in Western North Carolina and FCA as we reach out into these schools and draw them. We need your prayer. So you pray about that. And also when I talk to the schools, because on Friday night, May 22nd, 7 o'clock, right here, Jacob Berry is going to be here. And when Jacob Berry speaks, we're hoping that this entire place is packed out even in the lobby. We have to put the TVs on in the lobby, set chairs out with all the kids from the surrounding schools that come. So uh, there'll be a banner, and the school that brings the most students, uh, then they get that banner for one year. They win the attendance battle on that night for Fellowship Christian Athletes. They can take that. So kids, you tell, your, you tell the kids at school, you want, you want to win that banner. So let's remember that. Brother Lucas? Um. Kaylin Hammer, will you run in that first office and get that gray folder off that desk and bring it to me, please? While he's doing that, let me interject right here. Something that we, we drag our feet about, we're going to have to have a big deacon's dinner one night, and Cliff Hall and, and Rial, we haven't even given them their certificate from ordination yet. I don't even know how that happens. But they hadn't got it. And... Uh, Cliff, Cliff tried to get out of this world before getting his, but God spared him. So now he's going to have to get the show. So we're going to get that. And I told Lori to order some of this. We didn't even have any. And they're here? Are they here? Good. We'll fill them out, and we'll get them to you this week. We're going to have them. Matter of fact, I'll fill them out after service if I have to. We'll get those to you. And uh, I'm telling you what, if I was them, I'd be mad. I'd be mad at me. Maybe God's just testing their patience. But you appreciate them for not getting upset? Oh, I do. Um, if you did not see me this morning about uh, any participating in any events for youth retreat, please come see me after service. I'll be standing up here at the altar. Uh, I've got to have these waivers filled out uh, for, for, for you if you're, if you're going rafting, even if you're an adult. Uh, if you're going rafting, if you're playing paintball, I have to have waivers filled out on you. Uh, we we got to have our final count uh, this week so we can turn it into them. Um, talked with Pastor Chris, and um, usually we only have all, offered rafting in the past. This year we have paintball as another option. Uh, you're only going to have to pay for one of those. If you're signed up for, for two, you're, you just pick which one you want to pay for, and, and we'll, we'll work it that way. But we, uh, we always allow our... our kids to be able to go uh, for free for one of those events so again it's twenty dollars for paintball that's going to be on friday at two o'clock rafting will be after the morning service on saturday it'll be seventeen dollars um so again if you have not signed up please come and see me if i don't have a signed waiver i you can't go rafting you can't play paintball and and that's about all there is to that story so um anyway Wednesday night, Wednesday night, we need everybody that can be here um, if possible. The, the school's kids are going to be here, and they're going to be performing their end-of-year drama for us. And uh, it's going to be just a, a, a great night, and the kids are going to do a great job. I feel sure of that. But after, after that drama, we've got some work to do here around the church. We're going to have a prayer walk, praying for youth retreat. Uh, we've got to move all these instruments back up on stage. I, if I can't get some guys to help me after church tonight to get all this off of the stage for the school, I sure would appreciate it. We've got to put this back on Wednesday. we got some work to do in the kitchen, setting uh, tables down, tables and chairs down. And so um, also we'll be talking to our volunteers that have signed up in the foyer. If you've signed up to help work youth retreat um, this weekend, uh, we'll we'll have a brief meeting on Wednesday uh, just to go over some details with that. There's still some vacant spots for you not signed up to help serve food or different things like that. Uh, please stop by and sign up. And again, we'll be meeting with you on on Wednesday. Um, Senior Saints, thank you. My notes fell on the floor. Senior Saints will be meeting Tuesday, um, May the 19th at 12 p.m. at the chop house and if i'm in hiawassee that day i'm coming to the chop house for lunch 
Tuesday, Tuesday, sorry. May the 19th, this Tuesday at the Chop House. So uh, if you're interested in that, please sign up in the foyer. It gets a very affordable lunch menu. And uh, just to hear what's going to be coming up with that. Um, I know some of y'all folks in here, how y'all act when y'all get outside of church. And y'all are a lot of fun to hang out with. So um, anyway, I know y'all have a good time. Also, if you're on Sister Charlotte Anderson, t- Brother Tony, where are you at? I'm announcing this. If you're on Sister... <laughs> Charlotte Anderson's food cooking team, and you did not see her this morning, please see her uh, tonight. Also, Vacation Bible School will be June 8th through the 12th, and there's going to be a short meeting tonight right here in the sanctuary. So uh, if you're going to be involved in that, please uh, stay and meet with Brother Brian and Sister Carolyn on Bible School. Any announcements that I missed? I mean, I don't see Pastor Chris, so we'll exercise, we'll get our hands up in the air, and we'll shout praise the Lord three times. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord.